Hey guys, today is gonna to be a little bit different. Rather than giving you an in-depth guide into a Notion system, I'm gonna be battling it out with my good friend, Simon from Better Creative over the most important thing of YouTube, which is of course, Notion bragging rights. So we're gonna be sharing our top five Notion tips. If you wanna see the other tips, you're actually gonna to have to check that out over on Simon's channel. Sorry to be such a tease, but you know, as YouTubers, we've gotta grow and we've gotta eat. So if you haven't seen Simon's channel yet at Better Creating, I would definitely recommend that you check it out. I'm not just saying this to be humble, but it's just way better than this channel. He's really good at uh, producing and sort of filmmaking and storytelling and editing. And he's also just got some really great productivity content there as well. It's almost like a mixture between Matt Devella and James Clear just coming together. So couldn't recommend the channel highly enough. Of course, that's not gonna stop me from wiping the floor with him in this Notion standoff. So with that being said, Simon, what have you got for us? What is your first Notion tip? Hi everybody, and thank you Tom for that very generous introduction and strong fighting talk. Some might say too strong, I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but I'm gonna breathe, get my game face on, it's gonna be fine. I wanna come out swinging with this first one. It's a really essential Notion feature, surely, for any productivity system goal setting and tracking daily practices. It's one of the best ways that you can increase your productivity and focus your time and energy on the things that really matter. Uh, so this is my yearly review template. Um, and it, it's essentially the core of my system. It leads me through the process of reflecting on the previous year, the wins and losses, in a structured way that allows me to better draw out lessons from them and then set the next goals for the following year, meaning that I'm making sure that every single action that I take is leading towards one of those goals. That is the power of linked databases when you link it into the rest of your system. So here it is in 60 seconds, a quick demo. First thing is to start a new yearly review. If I click on that, give it a minute, it will generate a new yearly planner. I will then drop it down. Review and learn. I've got my wins and my losses. So I would list in all the wins I could think about. And if you want guidance, you can use this category. And then next to them, I would write in my lessons. So you can see on some of mine here. The same with losses. Once you've done that, you should then have a set of really clear lessons and kind of perspective on how the year went and what you might be thinking about for this year. We then open this section up and then three key goals. That's the most important part. A big enough thing to be scary, but achievable enough that you can believe in it. And milestones might be the key kind of things you want to hit or need to have done to hit them. And then really importantly, I put what obstacles might prevent me from achieving them and what the solutions might be to those obstacles. Then when you go into actioning into the system, you could put in to what is a goals template, right? A goals dashboard. I put in each goal here, you can set the year and all that. From here, I can then add practices. You would just put this information in so I can set if I what, what frequency I want it to be. You then put the start date and the end date and that will then generate how many times you have to do it and it will track it. So it will give you percentage progress, it will tell you when you last logged it, it will tell you the status, how well you're doing with it, and when it's next due. A goal setting system that ensures every single action you take contributes towards one of your goals. Productive creativity at its best. So come on Tom. <coughs> Retort. So in the first part of this video, I showed how I use the backtap feature to quickly access my journal. But some of you are probably wondering, what do I actually do when I'm in the journal? What's the structure that I follow? So let's have a look at that because I've actually found that a very strict, methodical process for journaling is what works best for me. And otherwise, I find it difficult to keep the habit going. So let's take a look. So the first section of my journal, very, very morbid, uh, but I like it. It's this Indify plugin, which shows me how far through various uh, sort of time metrics I am. So we've got the year, we've got the month, we've got the week, we've got the day, we've got the quarter, and unfortunately we've got the life as well. So yeah, this is just, in my opinion, a good way to get motivated for the day, because if you start your day saying, oh shit, I'm a third of the way through my life, uh, it's kind of motivating to go out and do something that you actually want to do. Now, the next thing that we have is the mental model that I'm working on. And this is again, just to remind myself what I'm currently trying to improve about my thought process at the moment. So I've come back to first principles thinking after uh, sort of having three or six months off it, just because I felt like I was getting a bit rusty. So that's what I'm currently focused on at the moment, using first principles thinking when making decisions. Now you'll notice that I've split out my journal into AM and then I've also got PM down here as well. And the reason that I do that is just so the journaling exercise itself doesn't become overwhelming and in the a.m. what I'm really trying to do is kind of pump myself up get motivated get ready for the day get my shit organized 
and then in the PM I'm more trying to be a bit more reflective, be a bit more um, yeah, chilled I guess and just trying to think about how the day's gone and just kind of wind down and be in that more reflective mode. So in the AM first I'm just listing out three things I'm grateful for, uh, a good productivity hack I think to just kind of get into a good uh, mood and then I'm listing out what's going to make the day great and this sort of translates into my to-do list uh, later on in the day as well or maybe I'll look at the to-do list first and then put those in as what would make today great. Then I write out my life purpose three times, which for me is leading teams, creating products. And yeah, that's just something that I'm really passionate about and writing it out helps to instill in me this idea that that's what I wanna be working towards. And finally, I write out the focus of the day. This is the one thing that I need to get done in that day for myself to consider the day a success. Uh, I really do think that a lot of people underestimate how much power just doing one thing every day can impact on your life because so many people just flutter away their days but if you can do one impactful thing uh, it really is a great way to keep the momentum going and then in the evening i'm just kind of reflecting on the quarterly mental model i'm writing out three amazing things that happened i've got a little habit tracker in here as well a very basic habit tracker and also just reflecting on what perhaps went wrong today and how i could improve and both of these sections combined probably only take me about five minutes a day so it's really great for me just to get into that habit of journaling get what i want out of it and yeah i'll leave a link for this in the description if you want to check it out your journal system is pretty cool, but I'm going to up the ante with this ultimate digital notebook system in Notion. Loads of people on YouTube have talked about how to best manage notes and digital note taking on something like Notion. The big challenge though, I think, is how you actually create multiple notebooks, but still keep all of your notes in one searchable, categorizable place, and also allow for creative interaction with it. So I set myself the challenge of creating a digital notebook system um, and this, is what I created. The cool thing about this system is that it does a lot of things. You can see all of your notes just within one database. So look, there it is. If I click on notes, everything is in there. The advantages of this is that of course you can then find any note that you want, but also um, you can kind of link it to projects and kind of feed it back to yourself. That means that they are completely searchable um, throughout the whole system. Um, I can filter the system so that I've got an inbox and the way that this clears, look, there's a note on our collaboration. It's linked to a project, it's linked to the video. As soon as I add it to my notebook, it disappears from my inbox and look, it will be over here in this section. So there are my notebooks. I can generate a new one with a template, which I think is really cool. Um, so it keeps that kind of freedom. And of course, then I've filtered things by priority and live notes. It's this using templates and also using this kind of toggle thing, which I think has color coded it really effectively and made it a really useful system. The other cool thing is if you're an Apple user, you can use your iPad and the scribble function to actually write with handwriting directly into this system. You've even got that advantage of something like GoodNotes where you can draw and create and then just drag and drop using the split screen on an iPad, dropping it straight into your Notion system and you're able to see the written hand notes and search them within your system. Pretty cool. Digital notebook system, okay, that's nice. I think I need to incorporate some more fancy terminology into my Notion system. So let's try this one. I'm gonna call it the digital second brain. Just add digital in there, because uh, why the hell not? Now the problem that this system solves for me is I guess, being the support for the weaknesses of my human brain. Now, human brains are great. They are full of emotion. They can help us connect with people. They can help us solve like really general problems, but they're really not good for memorizing and reciting information. And that's where the digital second brain comes in. So my second brain allows me to access the insights, articles, highlights from books, all at my fingertips and the real benefit of this is that I can just see everything in one place, I can see how it's categorized and if I ever want to create content on a certain topic, all I need to do is go into my second brain, find that topic and then I'm gonna have a load of information already there that I can just kind of remind myself of and pull out. So let's have a look at how this works. Uh, my second brain is really in two parts. I have one, which is just the general capturing of all information. And then I have another part, which is taking that information and kind of organizing it into uh, a system that's gonna work for me. 
So for the capture phase, I'm just using the Readwise plugin and all that's happening is when I'm reading an article or a book or I'm reading tweets that I really enjoy, I'm just highlighting them and they're automatically being pulled into my Notion system. Honestly, this is the best plugin that has ever existed for any productivity app as far as I'm concerned. It's only about five pounds a month and completely worth it. So in here, like you can see, all I need to do is come in, I can see the book and then I can also see any highlights that I've made for that book. And before this, I used to mess around with copy and pasting on Google Sheets, it was absolutely horrible. But since implementing Readwise, I can now get all of my highlights into one place and it's great. The problem with this is that this information at the moment isn't really, in my opinion, usable. To make it usable, I need to categorize it one step further uh, into my second brain. Now, how I think about categories is I think about general themes and areas of life. I'm not thinking about specific terms so much, but more about general ideas. So you can see here, I've got ambition, authority, beauty, business, innovation, so many different uh, categories, but not an overwhelming amount so that I'm not ever able to find the information that I need. So with the knowledge system, all I'm doing is taking the books that are in the absorbed columns. So this means that I've basically read the book. It's just a, a bit of a wanky term for uh, for saying that it's been that it's been read. And then all I'm going to do is take a copy of a quote that I that I particularly enjoy, and then I'm going to move it into my second brain in the category that I think that it fits in. And sometimes I'll give them, you know, categories like more than one category, for example, this quote here, compassion was the principle and perhaps the only law of existence for the whole of mankind. Such a beautiful quote from uh, Dostoevsky in The Idiot. And I thought this belonged to both authority and to kindness because in my eyes, it relates to law here. I mean, it's saying it's the only law, but it also relates to, to kindness and how those two things kind of interplay together. And hopefully you can see like how having a system like this can just be a complete game changer because now if ever want to tweet about anything or write about anything, it's as simple as coming into here, finding the topic that I want and then just recycling that content. So Simon, I would not want to follow this. Uh, I think this is one of the most powerful Notion systems I've seen if I do say it myself, but let's see what you've got. Well, that we have to agree, right guys, is a great second brain system that Tom's created there. I've made something similar, but seriously, I'm off to tweak my system, I think. Um, and I couldn't agree more with that idea of what really David Allen is saying, which is your brain is for having ideas, not for holding them. So rather than show you mine, I want to give you an example of how I've organized my second brain system to minimize the friction of actually capturing inspiration, notes, knowledge, and inputting it. Um, so what I decided to do is create a single knowledge database. So that's everything from like media references, like Tom's talking about, but also notes and notebooks and all of that stuff. What it does is it allows you to um, have a single inbox to capture it. Now this here is a filtered view of my second brain knowledge database. So it's the database that serves the notebook system and my knowledge bank where I store things like references, links, articles to be searched in one database uh, so that it can then be linked to projects or the content creation dashboard. So to capture something, I simply click on the button, put in the information I want, link it in however I like, and then when I select the database, whether notes or references, it will then go off into the system and I can see it later on. I've also created template buttons for either references or new notes so that I can quickly populate the forms and put them in the right database. I can also add tasks right at the top of the home screen in the inbox here. They are filtered into the system when I add them to a related project. Another couple of great hacks for um, kind of quick capture of ideas is using things like the Notion Web Clipper. If you heard about that, back that onto Chrome. So yeah, quick capture systems, inboxes that clear once you set a certain filter, speed up how you capture information, tasks, knowledge, whatever it is. Nice. Thanks, Simon. Man, that was some uh, some really great content, to be honest, and you've got some really cool systems. I'm definitely going to be looking again into your video on how you're linking up your digital notebooks. But we're really curious, uh, what do you guys think? Who do you think won the battle for the Notion clout? Did you prefer my systems or did you prefer Simon's? Let us know in the comments. And of course, check out the other video over on Simon's channel. I'll leave a description to that in the comments. But always, Thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your day.